From New Leaf Press Audio, you're listening to the unabridged excerpt audio presentation of You Don't Cry Out Loud by author Lily Isaacs. Copyright 2014. All rights reserved. No portion of this audiobook may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any form without prior written permission of the publisher. My mother arrived at Bergen-Belsen in January. The ground was hard, covered in snow. The air was cold. The Nazis stripped her, and soon she was numb, standing there in the winter air. The women all stood around, naked, in that January day, crossing their arms, trying to stay decent, trying to stay warm. Guards shaved her entire body, and then she was driven, along with the others, into a large building. She thought she was about to die. Instead, they were given showers and a camp outfit and then led to the barracks. The building was designed for 100 people, but each barrack would eventually house 500 to 1,000. My mother's unheated building contained girls in their teens and 20s. The guards gave them burlap sacks to use as blankets and chamber pots to use as toilets. The smell inside the barracks was overwhelming. My mother's schedule was basic and, for the most part, unchanging. Sleep as well as she could, on a bed if she could find an empty space, or on the wooden floor among the chamber pots. Guards woke them at 5 a.m. and a roll call was given out in the cold. Some days it went on for hours. Some days they stood there in sleet or snow or a cold rain while the Germans called out their names. Feet grew numb. Muscles shouted with pain. Those who fell over were usually shot where they lay. As poor as the conditions were inside the wooden barracks, my mother still chose to stay inside as much as possible. Outside of its walls, predatory Nazi guards looked to rape or kill based on their mood. Get too close to the gate, they would shoot you. Of course, you could also be shot for absolutely no reason at all. Everybody was just scared, my mother said. Scared they're gonna get killed. Nourishment came at the front of the food line. A roll of bread that had to last for several days. One cup of black coffee and one cup of watery soup, sometimes with nothing in it but grass. Later in the war, as German stores depleted, the daily ration dwindled to even less than that. It seemed... They were always being put in lines and separated, either to do jobs or to get food or to simply turn around and go back to the barracks. Yet lines often led to worse things than a cup of grass-filled soup and watered-down coffee. One day, as my mother waited in line with her sisters Lata and her friend Sabrina, a soldier began separating the women. You this way, you that way. Initially, the girls were separated. My mother directed to the left, while Sabrina and Zlata remained in line. Suddenly, as the line began to move forward, Sabrina grabbed my mom's arm. She's coming with me, Sabrina said, and the guard ignored her, allowing my mother to change lines. The line my mother had been in at first went to the gas chamber. Everyone in that line was killed that day. The line that Sabrina pulled my mother into received the normal ration and went back to their barracks. Day after day, week after week, year after year, the difference between life and death could be something as simple as a guard separating people into lines, or a prisoner taking one step too close to a fence, or the random tug of a soldier's trigger finger, or the angelic action of a friend named Sabrina. Sabrina.